today. And if you have not received a packet with the bread and the juice in it, will you raise your hands? We have two lovely people who are going to go and get you some, so just keep your hands up in the air or put it down when you need to rest, and then we'll just, they'll, yeah. That's right. And for those of you, oh, yeah, three upstairs, too. Yeah, Joe Dooley's gone back there to help them, too. Four. Ah, oh, yes, the little one. Yes, I can't see her over the top. Um, for those of you who are at home with us, if you will just get up and grab some juice and some bread or a cracker or something like that, communion is available to all, open to all. Now, please read your announcements. Uh, we have Wednesday night meal this week, dinner this week with activities, and it's in your bulletin here. And um, the meal is going to be prepared by Marissa Sharp, who is Gage's mom. And it's going to be meatloaf, mashed potatoes, green beans, mac and cheese, and cupcakes. Now, that sounds pretty good. And we are so thankful that Judy, had a crew, Judy Presley had a crew last week, and we had an incredible meal of the big baked potatoes and a fantastic salad bar. Wasn't it just wonderful? It was fantastic. It was. It was. Oh, yeah, don't forget the cake. Oh, yeah, that Butterfinger cake. All right, I think we're still looking for some candy. Always looking, Travis is like, we're always looking for candy, we're children. Um, and so, and Bailey has, uh, in her youth, have a youth spaghetti supper that's coming up, so the end of the month, so read uh, all about that. And um, there is an evening Bible study coming up in a couple of weeks for women, and it's going to be hosted by um, Teresa Gillenwater. So if you're interested in joining her, it's beginning April the 18th. They're going to be doing a study called, Bible study called, Living a Chocolate Life. My love language. So if you would like to start a small group, please contact me. And um, if you'd like to be in a small group, please let me know. Um, let's see, what else do we have on here? I think the rest of it can wait. Just know that Holy Week is, starts next week, so please read um, information about the Holy Week schedule. We have Palm Sunday next Sunday. Nick, not this Thursday, but next Thursday we have um, Monday, Thursday, and we'll have a potluck meal dish to, to share and then the service that will be there at the table. Good Friday on the April the 15th and here at 7, and then Easter Sunday on the 17th. So lots of things coming up for us in April, so be sure and join us for that. Have a slide, Lisa. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our... Oh, no, not ready for that part yet. No, we're not ready for that part yet. Christ invites all to his table for today. Let us, sting, let us stand and sing unclouded day.
children of Beaver Ridge. I got y'all waving at me now. That's nice. All right. Yes, as a reminder, we still are asking for candy. Those that have already donated candy, thank you. Thank you so much. We are constantly stuffing eggs, much to the children's chagrin during children's time and Wednesdays. But it'll be awesome because on April 16th is our annual pancake breakfast and egg hunt. Woo! So pancake breakfast at 9, we'll have some games, we'll have some Easter bunny pictures. At 10 o'clock we'll have the egg hunt and by 10.03 you'll be done because that's how quickly it happens. If you ever want to know what locusts look like swarming a field, come to the egg hunt and you'll see them. Just and they're gone. So I'm excited about that. All right, question time. What are some things that you consider valuable? What is valuable? What? Time? Time is valuable. Look very nice. Your health. Family. Friends. Money? Money's valuable, right? No, that's absolutely right. Most of the time, unless you're reflecting in church like all these good people at Beaver Ridge, when someone says valuable, you think of something that may cost a lot of money, like maybe some jewelry or some diamonds or maybe your, your Xbox or your PS5 or your toys are valuable or maybe you have fancy shoes. You know, I have something with me today that is extremely valuable. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. It's this right here. Now, I know, I know you're saying, Travis, it's just a hammer. It doesn't even look like a new hammer. It's a little rusty and it's got paint on it. And I know that this hammer is not as valuable as diamonds or jewelry or Xbox. But this hammer is very valuable to me because someone I love very much gave it to me. You see, this hammer is valuable for a personal reason. So the day my father bought his very first house, my grandfather bought him this hammer and gave it to him and said, son, you'll need it. And all these years later, on the day I bought my first house, my daddy handed me this hammer and said, son, you're going to probably need this. I don't know if I can do what I need to do with it half the time, but yes, I needed it. And so sentimentally, it's very valuable. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I get frustrated when I can't find it. It means something to me because of who gave it to me. And we have lots of things in our life like that, something that means something to us, that's valuable to us, that maybe not everybody understands. And one day, well, I got six kids. Um, I will buy them each a hammer <laughs> because that, that's going to be a problem if I try to give just one hammer away. So anyway, we'll, we'll revisit this in years to come. You can find me years down the line and see what happened to the hammer. Anyway, so think about, have you ever received a gift or something special to you that you really enjoyed? Like what did it made, what made it important to you? What made it valuable? So here's another question. I got lots of them today. What, were, what would you give if you were to give Jesus a present? What would you give that would possibly be worthy of... The, the man that saved the world. What would you give Jesus? Well, there's a story in the Bible about someone who gave Jesus a special gift. Jesus had come to dinner at the home of Lazarus, his close friend. He actually raised his friend from the dead. It's this guy. So he's here for dinner. And his sisters are there, Mary and Martha. And Mary did something very special for Jesus. See, she took a special expensive perfume and she poured it on him. In fact, she poured it on his feet. And then she wiped it with her hair. Now, that may seem sound a little strange to us because, you know, we see cologne and perfumes our parents have. If you're a dad, you've probably had the same bottle of cologne for years and years. You know, like, it doesn't seem that expensive to us. But this perfume in those days was worth about a year's salary because this was a special oil that normally people used when they buried their family members. And they would put on these perfumes and oils on the bodies before placing them in the tombs. So Mary, in sense, was getting Jesus ready for his death. And that might, be, that might seem odd to us that she would do this during a dinner, but Jesus deeply treasured that act. In fact, one of his disciples, Judas, who's famous for some other things, criticized her for saying and said that the money should be spent on helping the poor. 
But Jesus told Judas that Mary's actions were beautiful and that she had shown Jesus her love and care and done something that he valued and was precious in his sight. And he appreciated that the anointing was done out of her heart and a place of care. So you know Jesus values us too. He loves and blesses every gift that we bring to him. And the great thing is, is we don't have to bring expensive or fancy things to him. And yes, we tithe in church and sometimes we might help out in a monetary way, but really, Jesus just wants you. He wants your heart. He wants your time. He wants your talents. He wants your love. And all that we have comes from him, and we can show him gratitude by just giving back. That might mean something as simple as just praying or reading your Bible. It might be helping others with stuffing eggs for the egg hunt or helping on Wednesday night dinners. You know, maybe you don't think you're important enough to help or you don't think God can use you. But listen, God has made you and he loves you. And God can do amazing things with our lives if we're willing to be used by him. So let us pray. Dear God, we offer you our gifts and talents. Help us to honor you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids, you can come with me. Let us share our joys and concerns this morning, uh, just to let you know that um, Kristen Trindle had to go to the hospital for a day, but she did get, or for a night, but she is home. What Richard, her husband, was saying was that the timing was perfect, trusting Lord's timing, and that if she had gone to the hospital a day sooner, they would not have diagnosed her. If she'd gone a day later, it would have or could have caused permanent damage. So we praise the Lord for that, that she is at home, and she got the help that she needed, and she is doing better. 
I will say that Doug Melton's uh, mother, Margaret, is not doing very well at all, and uh, her passing is close. So please keep uh, Margaret and her children and grandchildren in your prayers. Our bookkeeper, um, Melody, has tested positive for COVID. So if you will please keep her in your prayers this week, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, and to let you know that uh, yesterday, uh, John and I were somewhere up in the mountains at a place called Creek Song. Pretty close to Pittman Center, far away from the fire, so we were all good. And we, we did a wedding. Our custodian, of, for, who's been our custodian for the past nine years, Kylie Potts, got married to her beau yesterday. Oh, it was just a beautiful, precious family. And so at the end of the month, on April the 24th, we're going to have a shower slash reception uh, over in the gym to... Uh, Congratulate, uh, congratulate them for this new chapter in their lives. Now, who else has a prayer request or, or joy? Susan, Susie. Oh my goodness. All right, so um, Susan's daughter, Shana, has a friend, Nina, and she had diverticulitis when they went in to treat it. Apparently there was complications for it. And then when she had laid for, on one side for so long, she got a pinched nerve and she's in excruciating pain. So much pain that they've given her not only pain medicine, but Narcan in case she overdoses. Uh oh, that's pretty serious. And please keep Joe Hunt and Mary Hunt in your prayers because he has been having excruciating pain as well. And he saw the, I believe, the neurosurgeon last Wednesday. And so I'm not sure of the treatment plan from him, but pray, pray that, that he is getting some relief. Thank you for that prayer request. Definitely pray for Nina. Anybody else? Praise. Barbara and Jim Stevens are here with us today, for those who are online. Welcome. I'm glad you are here today. Leslie. Oh, yeah. Yes. That is a great praise. Over the weekend, we had about eight people from our church went to Marion, Virginia to Project Crossroads to uh, cut wood. And as she reports, everybody came back with all fingers and toes and everything intact. So successful. Yes. Hi, Bob Joyce, who's watching at home. Happy birthday. Uh, for those who don't know, Bob is a walking miracle for having survived uh, cancer and um, beating the odds. And uh, so, uh, happy birthday, my friend. You deserve it. Anybody else? All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for the spring, for this change of season. We see the things beginning to bloom and to come forth from the earth after a long, sleepy winter. We see the beauty of the vibrant colors and the fragrance. And even though the pollen is, is getting to some of us, Lord, we... We know, though, that with all that is coming with this season, there's love and newness and new beginnings. 
Lord, thank you for the gift of creation, for all that you have created, including us. Thank you that we are your children. And so we gather today in this place of worship and we sing out your praises. We pray to you. We offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Thank you for the blessing, the privilege to share our joys and our concerns and to lift up by name people that we love for healing, for comfort, for care, for provision. Thank you that you are always with us, Father. And on this day, we are most thankful for your precious Son, who you sent to share his love, to show us how to love and how to be loved. It is this prayer that we pray that he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now at this time, as part of our um, worship for communion. Please join with me, confession and pardon. Just stay where you are, Gage. Please read, Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And with that, we lift up our voice. Jesus is calling.
When you hear Jesus call and you answer that sweet call, our lives begin to change. We realize, like the prodigal son story last week, that we have been in the far country from time to time. And at any moment, God welcomes us home. We confess, Father, I have not been all that you have called me to be. I have sinned. God restores us into a relationship with him through the Son. And so we offer thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. And by the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Travis' message was very powerful when Mary broke the ointment, the perfume, and anointed our Lord and Savior. I share with you scripture of another woman who broke open her jar as well. Our scripture for today comes from Luke 7, verse 36 through 50. When one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went to the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table... And a woman in the city who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors. One owned 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing me, my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, 
Her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is given loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is God's word for all people. Thanks be to God. This story reminds us and encourages us to say what needs to be said in love and to do what needs to be done in love. So let me go straight to the heart of today's message. This world is hurting. It's on fire. Someone will draw their last breath today, and too often words of kindness, words of love are left unsaid. Oh, I I know that there are reasons. There are plenty of reasons why we hesitate to break open our hearts and pour out the precious perfume of love. But if our words matter, and as a pastor, I believe our words matter. Scripture tells us words matter. For words bring life and words bring death. So say what you need to say and do what you need to do. In love. And so she walked into the room. Her very presence stirred the air. Some would say it disturbed the air. But with all that she was and with all that she had, she entered. We do not know the details of her story. We do not know her life prior to her entering into this room on this day, in this moment. But with her first step, she became my hero. I imagine that I know something about the essence of who she is because in this story we see her incredible courage. We see her heart. It takes courage to walk where you are not wanted. It takes conviction and purpose to give all that you have, not knowing if, if anyone will notice, or if they do, will they even care? Now in our story today, she is not given a name. She has no name. So do not assume that you know her name. To know her name would be to know her, and we do not know her. And so one might wonder if this woman had grown accustomed to not being noticed. There is something safe about being invisible. Oh, I know that story all too well. But he did not create her for a life lived unnoticed. And yet, how many times had she heard the deafening sound of words left unsaid? That is, until he came. That moment when he came into her life, she was changed forever. So say what you need to say and do what you need to do in love. On that day, I wondered if she was thinking, you know, if I could just keep my head down and walk in quickly and quietly, low to the ground, maybe they will not even notice. It had worked before, I'm sure many times. She didn't need their glare. She didn't want their words. She had come only for one. And he noticed. He always noticed. And it was his kindness, his words, that had given her the courage to offer the most expensive gift she owned. 
and it was a precious perfume. It was extravagant. And that was the problem, wasn't it? The others quickly saw the value of her gift. In horror, they watched as she broke open the jar and poured this precious nard upon the one she loved. I wonder if her hands shook. I wonder if she trembled. Was her heart pounding? Was it hard to breathe? In that moment, she said what she needed to say, and she did what she needed to do in love. Quickly, like stones, their words pelted her heart. And scripture tells us their words were indignant and they scolded her harshly. How could it not have hurt? But thank God, their words were not the last words. For when he spoke, their words fell silent. His words clothed her in love like a groom covers his bride. She has done a beautiful thing to me, he said. What she has done will be remembered. Say what you need to say and do what you need to do in love. In their desire to possess her gift, they missed it. They could not see that the perfume she brought into that room was not the most expensive gift she had brought into that room. Because she was the gift. You see, Jesus didn't come into this world and pour out his life for a bottle of perfume. He didn't hang on the cross for nard. He hung on the cross for her, for you, for me. Even for the ones who hated her and despised him. Sometimes it seems that the ones who claim to sit closest to Jesus often forget the precious value of his gift. And so it was in the breaking of that jar, she broke the vessel of her heart and poured out the essence of Hesed, loving kindness upon his feet. That was the precious gift she brought. That was what she gave. And each of us has been given a precious gift, this vessel of life. And with this gift, we choose when and where, if ever we choose, to break open our heart and pour our love onto and into this world so that the fragrance of God's kingdom covers his people. Some will choose to pour out their lives each and every day and what you pour out will be a beautiful offering. It will be remembered forever. Sadly, some will choose to never break the seal. Say what you need to say and do what you need to do in love. Now, I've enjoyed the fragrance of this place for the past nine months as your pastor. And I have watched many of you pour out your loving kindness into the lives of others and anoint them with such a sweet fragrance. And your deeds will be remembered forever. Many, many years ago when I was a young woman, I was that woman who was invisible. And I was quite content to be unseen. But God did not create any of us for a life not lived and not connected to one another. 
a life not broken and poured out. And I knew deep inside of me that God was calling me to walk into the mystery we call ministry. But I could not find my voice. I couldn't find my voice to say what I needed to say. I wasn't a preacher. I wasn't a teacher. I couldn't even pray out loud. And it was painful to know I had something and I couldn't pour it out. But God didn't let go of me, and I did not let go of God. And one day, I was at a dramatic arts worship conference in Nashville, Tennessee. Some of my friends said, do you have anything to do this weekend? And I said, no. And they said, good, you're going to Nashville with us. And I thought, okay. That's often how God captures us. But what I saw that weekend changed my life. And like the woman in our story for today, there was a young man who did not have a name. And he was handsome. And he was in his 20s. During that Sunday morning creative arts worship, he stood up and he signed the words to My Redeemer Lives by Nicole C. Mullins. The room fell silent with the fragrance of his gift. And when I saw the passion and the power of the voice he had through his signs, his hands, and his body, I prayed, dear Lord, give me that gift, and I will have a voice. To say what we need to say is more than just our words, so much more. It is your actions. It is our deeds. And sometimes it is as simple as showing up and being present. It is every time we walk into a room, we break open our heart and we pour out our love, our love for neighbor and our love for God. And it is a precious and priceless gift. The woman in our story who offered such an extravagant gift did not know what would happen in just a few days. For in a few days, Jesus would be crucified. And now, if you will, you do not have to, but if you will, close your eyes. Be still. Imagine your Savior hanging on the cross. Can you see him? Look closer and look into his face. Do you see his pain? Do you see him struggle for each breath? Now imagine a gentle breeze is blowing. I've heard it said that it wasn't the nails that held Jesus on the cross that day. It was his love. But have you ever wondered what sustained his love as he hung there? I believe that when the gentle breeze blew across his face, the fragrance of her love and the love for humanity filled his senses and comforted him until it was finished. How beautiful is the body of Christ. You may open your eyes.
on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Be still. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and juice, wine, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through our Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. The body was broken. And his life poured out. The table is prepared. And you have your elements. You may partake. She was more than enough because he is more than enough. You are more than enough because our God is more than enough. Thanks be to God. Now will you stand and sing our closing hymn, Take the Name of Jesus with You.
God's children said, Amen.